Hello, my name is Gary Pace. I'm a professional engineer in CWI out of Katy, Texas. This is part 3A, pre-qualification of WPSs for um, pre-qualified WPSs for AWS D1.1, which is the Structural Steel Welding Code. Um, this first part, I'm just going to cover, I'm kind of setting the table for the second part, obviously. Um, we talk about WPSs, what WPSs are used for, PQRs, how PQRs relate to WPSs, um, some of the welding pro procedures or processes that are allowed to be used as pre-qualified. I kind of touch base on some of those. Um, so anyways, you know, buckle up. It's a thrilling ride. Um, so, but there's two parts to this one. I didn't do it in one part because it would have been extremely long and I'd have probably lost all you guys anyways after about the first 10 minutes except the hardcore anyways enjoy as I do every uh, YouTube video that I put together I tell you where I snagged most of the material out of the public domain nuclear regulatory commission um, can do the can Canadian deuterium uranium nuclear reactor people and the U.S. Army, and I've also pilfered some stuff from some uh, U.S. Navy manuals. So just thought I'd throw that out there, let everybody know where I got most of my material from, and then I've just kind of added on and gone from there. All right, here's our table of contents for AWS D1.1. We're going to get into Clause 3, which is pre-qualification of WPSs which is pretty much the meat of the welding code, of this code. Um, clause 3, 4, 5, and 6 to me are the heavy bulk of the code. And I guess now that they've added tubular structures, Clause 9 is pretty important. And I'm not saying Clause 1, 2, 7, and 8 aren't important, but they aren't the meat of the code to me. They're not the... They're, they're a garnish. They're the... You know, you go out for a steak dinner, they're the the side order of whatever you know some kind of side salad on the side so it's not the main courses clause three pre-qualification of wpss pre-qualified wpss may be used without qualification but the wps must be written limitations do apply you can't just go off on your own and just say okay this is pre-qualified you have to follow a very strict um, recipe so to say to use a pre-qualified WPS and even though the WPS is pre-qualified the welder still needs to be qualified he's still got to run a test plate he or she they need to run a test plate and get it x-rayed or bend tests or whatever the clause 4 says for that particular type of weld that you're doing Welding processes. If you're going to use the pre-qualified route, you can only use shielded metal arc, submerged arc, flux core, and gas metal arc. Gas metal arc, you can't use um, short circuiting. That's out of the picture. Anything below about 20 volts, you can't use. That's short circuiting. You can use short circuiting in D1.1, but you have to qualify it. Because it's such a, you get incomplete fusion and it doesn't really tie in well. And people, if you don't know what you're doing with short arc, you can really get into trouble. Um, flux core and gas metal arc must use constant voltage power supplies. There are code approved welding processes such as electro slag, electro gas, gas metal arc short circuiting, and gas tungsten arc welding. You can use these, but you have to qualify the WPS in accordance with section 4. You can still use electro slag, electro gas, gas metal arc welding, short circuiting, or gas tungsten arc welding, but that WPS needs to be qualified. You're going to need to do some tensiles, some band tests, whatever section 4 says you need to do in order to qualify that welding process. And to write a WPS, you're going to need a supporting PQR, once again, all written in accordance with Clause 4. Parts of a welding program. I'm going to kind of back up before we go forward. So almost every welding program, you're going to need a few documents. You're going to need welding procedure specifications, WPSs. 
you're going to need welding procedure qualification records, which is a PQR. PQRs support the WPS. And you're going to need welding performance qualification records, which are the documents that qualify your welders. That's your paperwork that says, yeah, this welder did this test and he can run this filler material in this position and make a deposit sound weld metal. So this is the backbone of your welding program. You're probably going to need some filler metal control procedures, some purchasing procedures and whatever. But for a solid welding program, you're going to need at least these three and some other documentation. WPS. A welding procedure specification is a qualified instruction on how to complete the weld. This is basically the recipe. This is the recipe you're giving the welder on how to make the weld. A PQR is a procedure qualification record. It's the record of the welding per parameters and test results that were utilized to make a test plate where you did some bend tests and you did some tensile tests and whatever other testing that you're going to need to support your WPS. This is a written document that has lab test reports, you know, that you did the bend test, that you did the tensile tests and all that stuff. A WPQ is a welder performance qualification. Um, this is a record of the weld test results in the range of approval. This says that the welder can weld in a certain position with a certain filler metal. You know, he's running open route, 6G pipe, whatever he's got going on. That's, this is the documentation for the, the welder that says your welders are qualified. Why procedure qualification is required. The purpose of a welding procedure a w specification, a WPS, and procedure qualification record is to determine that the welding operation proposed for fabrication are capable of producing welds with required properties for intended applications, assuming that the welder performing the welding procedure qualification test is a skilled workman. A procedure qualification test is used to establish the properties of the weldman and not the skill of the welder. So this is just a fancy way of saying the WPS is the recipe and the PQR is the test documentation that we used to support that this is a solid um, procedure or method for joining weld metal A to weld metal B and using a filler metal. Um, the one I always use with some of my students is, you know, if we were, and this is an extreme example, if we were welding plywood to cardboard and using bubble gum, we would document that we're welding the plywood to the cardboard and we're using bubble gum, you know, to weld it together. And we would put this together and then we would pull some bend tests or pull some tensile tests and do some bend tests on it. And we would document that our plywood to um, cardboard using bubble gum was a procedure that, you know, met the criteria for whatever we were building, um, the mechanical criteria. So that's what a procedure qualification test or record is, PQR. Then we would use that to write our WPS, the weld procedure specification, which is the recipe. And then we would, this is where we would tell the welder, okay, you're going to use this kind of cardboard and this kind of um, plywood and you're going to use this specific brand of bubble gum. You can only use grape bubble gum. You can't use the pink stuff. And the welder is going to follow that recipe making these welds with plywood, um, cardboard, and bubble gum. I don't know. Kind of an outlandish um, way to think about it, but it's extreme, but that's what I got for you. Welding procedure specification is a required document for all code welding. Your customer either directly or indirectly specifies to what code your company must qualify. The WPS outlines all of the parameters required to perform your welding operation. In short, the WPS is the recipe for welding operations. It describes the welding process or processes used, the base materials used, the joint design and geometry, gases, 
and flow rates, welding position, and includes all the process conditions and variables. Each code has a recommended format. That's what a welding procedure specification is. It's it, it's whatever code you're making your structure or component to is going to specify what needs to be into your WPS. Procedure qualification record, PQR, is the document that qualifies the welding procedure specification. In order to qualify your WPS, a procedure qualification plate is welded to the code requirements. The actual test parameters are recorded at the time of welding to ensure the WPS was being followed. So you kind of have a pre-WPS. A lot of companies will have you do a pre-WPS, a PWPS, where you tell them what you're going to do before you do it so they can say, nah, this probably isn't going to work. And this is with qualification. This is section, this is clause four, um, qualification, but it also comes into play here because we're not going to need a procedure qualification record. The PQR combines all the information of the WPS and adds the test results to provide a complete document that certifies the welding specification. Tells everybody what we did, how we did it, when we did it, the date, time, everything. This document is also required by all codes unless you are qualifying under the American Welding Society specifications. Under certain conditions, the WPS may be considered pre-qualified in which the PQR is not required. So that's where we're headed in this episode. In the next episode, we'll talk about needing a PQR. But we're talking about pre-qualification. Here we have a WPS, uh, Welding Procedure Specification. This is an ASME Section 9 one, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, but an AWS one looks pretty damn similar. Um, you know, you're going to list filler metals and techniques and address all the essential and non-essential variables on here, preheats, positions, whatever information is required by that code. Um, if you like this format, you can use it. If you don't like this format, you can invent your own. Most codes have a suggested format, but if you've got one that you like, run with it. I worked for a company years ago, and theirs was all written out. We did a, um, ASME work, um, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, a lot of ASME work. So we just had everything typed out and addressed in paragraph form. Didn't look anything like this. Looked like a book report or something. Um, but it worked. Our clients liked it. Everything was addressed. We had a couple little sketches on there, maybe a table or two, but that's what it looked like. This is what a welding procedure specification looks like. Even though we're not going to be talking really about procedure qualification records in Clause 3, you need to know what we're talking about so that you need to know you know what we're not talking about when we're not talking about it. So this is a procedure qualification record. Um, you know, there's information there for bend tests, tensile tests, and then you put um, put down all the information over on the left hand side. You know, voltages, amperages, filler metals used, base metals. Um, a sketch of the joint, whatever pertinent information you're going to need. And then you're going to take this, type it up, add your um, tensile test, your bend test, your toughness test, whatever is prescribed by that particular code. And then you're going to um, bundle that all up, give it a number, a PQR number, and that's what you're going to have. And that'll be your procedure qualification record that will support your welding procedure specification. PQR content, what goes on a PQR? Generally, any supporting documentation, material specifications, electrode specifications, shielding gas specifications, all required testing, non-destructive and destructive. Um, these tests typically include x-ray examinations, ultrasonic, tensile testing, bend testing, and when required, impact testing. All this stuff gets bundled up into a PQR. Okay, so while we're talking about qualification in Clause 4, I'm going to kind of go off into the weeds here, get off on a sidetrack, and talk about PQRs and supporting WPSs. So 
if you ra- have a WPS, uh, a WPS and a PQR is not a one-to-one relationship. You can have one PQR supporting one WPS. A PQR is a document that it's like the test run. We welded material A to material B, and we used a certain filler material. We did some bend testing. We did some tensile testing. We showed that we could achieve the desired mechanical properties for our welding procedure, and we wrote it down. That and it, We included our lab data and everything else, and that's our PQR, our procedure qualification record. And then we go and write a WPS, which is like a recipe. It's the recipe for cookies or rice or stirred fried rice or whatever, bread. That's the recipe we give to the welders, the cooks, and then they follow that. They don't need to know, the the welder should never ever look at a PQR. They should only look at a WPS. So a PQR is the document we have back in our filing system and we show it to the, uh, the inspectors or whoever might want to look at it to see that our WPS is supported by a legitimate PQR. So a WPS is a recipe for the welders. The PQR is a document that supports the WPS. And as I said before, a WPS to a PQR is not a one-to-one relationship. Sometimes you might have three PQRs supporting one WPS. Um, Let's say I started off with A36 uh, carbon steel base material and I welded it with E70, E7018 low hydrogen electrode and that was my original WPS. Well, let's say a, a customer comes along and says, we like your WPS, but we need you to have some documentation for impact testing. So then we go do another PQR with the same materials and we send it to the lab and we get impact testing done. So we add that, but that's a different PQR. And then let's say they they want us to do a, or I don't know, let's say there's a third variable that they want us to test, corrosion resistance or something. So we write a third PQR to help support our WPS. So a lot of times you might have a WPS that's got multiple PQRs supporting it. PQRs to WPSs is not a one-to-one. It's just PQRs are a supporting document to help you be able to write a recipe that the welders can use. The WPS is the the recipe, the the instructions that the welder follows to make a component, to fa- f- follows when he's doing fabrication. So just keep that in mind. PQR supports the WPS. Um, I can have one PQR supporting multiple WPSs. I used to work at a place where I had, um, there was probably 20 different WPSs that were just all slightly different. And it was for all welding carbon steel and using E7018, low hydrogen electrode. But you'd have a client come in and say, I want it to weld between this voltage and this voltage. And I want my WPS to have this cleaning method and this cleaning method. I don't want you to be able to use a grinding wheel on it. I want it, you know, use this special wire brush from Lithuania or whatever. It was some kind of requirement. So we would have a very specific WPS for that client and that client only. And it was all supported by a PQR from yesteryear. You know, the PQR, the essential variables on that PQR had not changed. So, you know, client A might have a WPS, client B might have a WPS, and client C might have a WPS. It's all supported by the same essential variables on that PQR. Maybe the client wanted a non-essential variable changed because they had a they had a very specific requirement or that's just how they wanted it written. So, um there's something to keep in mind. I know I'm kind of get, getting off into the philosophy of writing WPSs and managing a weld, um, a welding program, but this is uh, something to keep in mind when you're dealing with WPSs and PQ. So what does pre-qualification mean? Pre-qualified WPSs are welding procedure specifications that are between common structural steels that have been done so many times in the past 
that if you use the welding processes listed with the filler materials and base materials listed in Table 3.1, you don't need to do a formal qualification test, but you must write down what you've done and that's your WPS. Pre-qualified welding procedures are permitted by some industry standards and codes, such as AWS D1.1. Under these rules of the code, the fabricator prepares in writing a welding procedure that addresses the specific requirements of that governing code for materials, joint design, welding processes, techniques, etc. for the application or for the component that is being welded. Um, AWS D1.1 Structural Welding Code Steel has joint details and welding processes which are classified as pre-qualified. Therefore, the preparation of the WPS for this application is much simpler process than if you did it by qualifying by testing. Basically, you go through and you check off some things, write it up, make sure you address everything, and you don't have to send anything. You don't have to do a test coupon, send it out for bend testing, none of that. You just write it up. We're following the rules. We're welding this to this. And using this base material and this welding process and this is our pre-qualified procedure and then you're good to go. Once again, uh, the process is for pre-qualification. You can use shielded metal arc welding, submerged arc welding, flux cord arc welding, and gas metal arc welding in the spray or globular transfer modes. Um, unacceptable and need a PQR, electro slag welding, electro gas welding, gas metal arc welding, short circuit, gas tungsten arc welding, or TIG. You can use these processes with this code. They're just not pre-qualified. So you got to, if you want to do TIG with electro slag, have at it. You just need to qualify it. You got to run a test coupon, do some bend tests, x-ray, whatever, and prove that you can run the, the process and get a you know, a, a quality result, an acceptable result that meets all the applicable uh, mechanical properties. So you can use those processes on the far right, but you just need to qualify a PQR. You need to do a test plate, send it out to the lab and get some results and write yourself a PQR to support your WPS. Not acceptable for pre-qualification. Kind of give a crash course on the four processes we can use. Gas metal arc welding. Um, you know, you've got a hard wire, a solid metal wire, you're using a inert gas and you're using a constant voltage power supply. And generally for the most part, anything above about 21 volts, you can't use short circuiting, short circuiting mode of transfer is prohibited with, um, gas metal arc welding. If you're going to do pre-qualification shielded metal arc welding, this one's pre-approved. You know, you got a, a covered electrode. It's got a core wire. Um, you know, this is the most popular and I guess um, not popular, but most widely used welding um, process on the planet. Shielded metal arc welding. It's a good, solid, portable process used the world over. So um, this one you can use as pre-qualified. Flux cord arc welding. Flux cord arc welding looks similar to gas metal arc welding. But inside of the wire, there is a flux. The flux is pretty similar to the flux that is on the outside of shielded metal arc welding. This is basically shielded metal arc welding turned inside out. And the filler metal electrode has been turned into a wire. And it uses pretty much the same equipment as um, gas metal arc welding. Flux cord arc welding can either be um, self-shielded or you can have dual shielded which you know you've got a shielding gas and you've got the flux on the inside submerged arc welding this is basically um, stick welding shielded metal arc welding but you're using a hard wire and you've got flux in a big tube and you're just dumping it onto the weld there's the arc is completely buried under the um, flux. So submerged arc welding. This one is also pre-qualified. Gas tungsten arc welding, an absolutely wonderful process, usually used in pipe welding and other situations. This one is not pre-qualified. Gas tungsten arc welding is not pre-qualified. 
you can use it in AWS D1.1, but it is not pre-qualified. You're going to have to qualify a weld procedure if you want to use this um, welding process. Gas metal arc welding S, short-circuited, is prohibited for pre-qualified WPSs. GMAWS is also known as short arc, is great for welding on thin gauge materials. This welding process is not suitable for structural steels as the low voltages and amperages result in low heat input, which leads to fusion problems when welding on heavy materials. Cold lap or lack of fusion is a defect where the weld metal does not fuse to the base material. And this is a defect that you can run into a lot with gas, uh, gas metal arc welding, short arc um, mode of transfer, and you're just not fusing into the base metal, especially when you're working on heavier materials you know, three eighths of an inch, half an inch. It's just, you're not burning in all the way. And it's, you've, you're not putting enough heat into the part. The low voltage and the amperages just don't allow you to burn in as well as you need to. So that's why this one is prohibited for uh, pre-qualified WPSs. Preparation of a pre-qualified WPS. Um, you're gonna review the job requirements. Make sure that what you're welding you can pre-qualify it. Make sure that the material that you're going to use falls under one of the materials that's listed in the um, clause three in the table for materials, suitable materials. Um, make sure you got the right welding process. If you're going to TIG weld this thing, you're out of luck. Or if you're going to use electro slag welding, you're out of luck. You can't use a pre-qualified WPS. Ensure that all the, once you've got your job requirements and you've got a welding process make go through the clause and make sure all your welding variables are covered that you've addressed everything write a rough draft make a run at a rough draft of the WPS based on the above information and then go back through and write your final WPS and ensure that all applicable and relevant code criteria have been addressed which we're going to start grinding our way through Clause 3 on the next slide. Okay, so now we're to pre-qualified WPSs. Now that we've talked about WPSs and PQRs, a pre-qualified WPS doesn't need a supporting PQR. It's just a standalone document. Pre-qualified welding procedure specification use known variables that have a long history of making sound weld metal and require no testing. A written procedure is required for all pre-qualified weld procedures. So it's telling us that these welds have been made so many times using, let's say, carbon steel, A30X, A36, garden variety carbon steel, just your run-of-the-mill carbon steel, and E7018. You can weld these with certain joints, certain thicknesses, certain preheats, and you can do it, and you don't need to qualify it every time because we've been doing it here in the United States to this welding code for 50 or 60 years that they've just said, all right, if you're following these rules and using these welding procedures or this welding process with this filler material and this base metal, you're good to go. So that's where a pre-qualified WPS comes in. Okay, and this was originally going to be one... Um, YouTube video but I looked at the number of slides and it was going to be pretty long so I broke it up into two separate um, episodes let's call them and I got a sequel Star Wars 1 Star Wars 2 no uh, so I broke it up into two digestible pieces um, summary um, we covered pre-qualified processes I kind of set the table you know, with approved um, welding processes, what a WPS is, a PQR, kind of talked about some philosophical things. So this one is continued on, um, it should be a part 3B, I think is what I'm going to name it, but there's a part two to this. This is the part one, there'll be a part two. So part two takes up where this one leaves off. Any questions, comments, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Um, there's my website. My name's Gary Pace. I'm a CWI, um, and a professional welding, professional engineer. 
Uh, I, my focus is on welding. So if you got any questions, I know some of you have sent me texts or emails and uh, asked questions. So feel free to do that. Sometimes I might not get back to you very quickly, but I will get back to you. All right. Take care. Have a nice day.